Good evening, we're going to go ahead and get started. I know there will be a few parents uh, coming in a little bit late. They're finishing up the open house at the secondary building. I'd like to welcome you to the third annual State of Schools Address. My name is Kevin Kimmel, Superintendent here at Bessar State Schools. The goal for tonight is to provide you a brief update of our continuous improvement plan. Each of the six district goal areas will be highlighted by a few of the activities over this past year. Uh, by no means can we cover all of the activities that they've been involved in uh, because we'd have to take at least an hour for each of, each of the goals. But we'll just highlight a few of their accomplishments. We'll also spend a little bit of time on the athletic strategic plan which was recently adopted here in the spring. I uh, do want to note a few things before we get started. Each of the goal areas uh, conduct quarterly meetings throughout the year. And if you're interested in getting involved in any of the goal areas, uh, we will show you a list of their dates tonight, but uh, don't expect you to jot those dates down. Uh, we do have these available on the website and would encourage you to follow up and uh, check that information out. Some of the action steps are dependent on financial resources, which are obviously very limited, not only in Bucyrus, but also across the state. Uh, we'll spend some time tonight taking a closer look at the financial challenges that our district is facing. As many of you know, this past spring, the Board of Education implemented a reduction plan uh, that resulted in 34 positions being eliminated, which represented a 16% reduction in personnel. These reductions were necessary due to the deficit spending this past two years in amounts of 900,000 and 1.3 million, respectfully. Uh, in dollar figures, the 34 positions that were eliminated equaled $1.6 million annually. Uh, tonight, you'll see the ongoing work that our community said was important when this five-year plan was adopted in 2009, along with the opportunity for you to tell us what is expected of the schools today. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Secondary Principal, Mr. Matthew Henderson, who is in charge of the Student Life Goal. Thank you. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Matt Henderson, principal of Bussard Secondary School, and I co-chaired the Student Life Committee along with uh, Bussard City Schools Board member Sandy Stone. One of the goals of the Student Life Committee was to evaluate our dress code and the enforcement of the dress code in the building. Uh, the dress code, committee, uh, dress code subcommittee was established to investigate, among other things, the implementation of campus wear. In that process, we interviewed local business professionals as part of this process to seek feedback on what expectations are placed on employees in terms of appearance and professional dress. We also held a community forum last November to determine the community's perspective. Also, we sent out a student and community survey to seek feedback on this issue. As a result, uh, campus wear was not implemented for this school year, and our focus shifted rather to enforcing the current dress code. Some of the other work the Student Life Committee did was through the Speak Truth Power curriculum, which was introduced to uh, Bussard Secondary School by Adam Stone in partnership with the RFK Center in New York. We utilized this in our Redmond time as a method of opening lines of dialogue about bullying in our school system and how to tackle that issue. Uh, the Speak Truth to Power lessons were utilized and introduced in our social studies and language arts classes on the high school side. We were able to have Jamie Nabozny and Harry Wu visit our community to speak not only to our students, but the community at large. And we are continuing this program this year. And finally, uh, we are continuing our BES Positive Behavior Program and the Bucyrus Secondary School Renaissance Program in grades 6 through 12 to reward students for demonstrating uh, positive behavioral traits, good attendance, and excellent academic performance. And I've highlighted here the 2012-2013 the meeting dates and would encourage any of you who have an interest in student life uh, to be a part of that group. Please at this time join me in welcoming Tina Herman to discuss highly qualified staff. Hi, as you, he said, I'm Tina Herman and my goal is the highly qualified staff committee. And I'd like to recognize Adam Stone as the board representative to the highly qualified staff committee. Most of our staffing goals have been met, 
and not much has changed since last year last year's state of the schools address we have added two members to our district plus one from pioneer and one from the mid ohio educational service center um, our staff members have money available for individual professional development along with two waiver days and the early release wednesdays and in June, we honored 23 staff members for their years of service to our district, which equaled 436 years. That's quite something. Um, I'd like to invite anyone to, interested to join our staffing committee. And again, the dates are listed here, and our contact information will follow. And that's all I have to report. So I would like to turn the microphone over to Mr. Burke, the Communications Committee. Thank you, Tina. Uh, welcome, and uh, I am uh, part of the Communications Committee, and I'd like to recognize our, our, our board member, uh, Doug Schieffer. Uh, some areas that we wanted to highlight, uh, the smoke signals. Um, we sent out just recently, and there are copies in the back if you did not receive one. For smoke signals, we have done the traditional print uh, hard copy at the beginning of each year. All of the smoke signals following, we will take care of in our uh, Redmond News and our uh, Redmond blog. We decided to switch from the traditional print copies to the blog or online version so that we could be more timely in our news reporting. We wanted to be cost effective uh, and save some district funds. And also it opened up two-way communication between our community and the school. Some updates to the website. Um, we've added some information to a treasurer's page, uh, dress code information, after school programming, family, lit family literacy, and uh, we're always looking to expand our membership and our alumni databases. Um, our upcoming meetings are listed uh, there on the board. We usually meet at central office um, at 3.30, and we're looking for new ways to not only improve our website, but to improve uh, our communications with the public and our community. Uh, so if you want to participate, uh, please, check our website out. And at this time, I'd like to welcome Donna Stanfield, our Director of Curriculum, Instruction, and Assessment. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Um, Mark introduced me, but I really want to say that I am here filling in for Todd Roll, who could not make it tonight. And our board member that serves on our Curriculum and Instruction Committee is Dr. Paul Johnson. And we appreciate his input. The things that we'd like to highlight with our uh, goal area has been, first of all, there's a concentrated effort to increase technology in both of our buildings and the use of 21st century skills for our students <laughs> through netbooks, iPads, nooks, tablets, and this has been increased in both buildings which results in increased student learning as well as it addresses more of their style of learning in the classrooms. The second bullet I want to talk about is response to intervention. You may have heard the terms RTI. This was implemented also in both buildings district-wide this past year, which focuses on alternative instructional strategies for the teachers to use with students who are requiring intervention, whether that be academic or behavioral. The third item, again, district-wide, K-12, we have implemented a program called Fast for Word. This program is uh, for students, it will assist students being able to read and comprehend in any content area. And I, I really am real pleased about this particular one is because those of you that will be attending tomorrow night and Thursday night at the uh, Bucyrus Elementary orientations for uh, the grade levels there, we'll be talking about the third grade guarantee, which this plays a very vital role in that in addressing our students. I also, not only do we implement Fast for Word, but we have additional resources and interventions that we offer for all K-12 students through Title I. And on the back table there, you can see on the round table, you may pick up a letter 
at the back of the room for more information on additional um, interventions that are available for your child. You see our three uh, dates there that uh, Mr. Roll will be holding for the curriculum instruction. So we always are welcoming ideas and things that you would like to see what your children are learning in the classroom and how that can be accomplished. Those are, ten they tend to start at 4.30 to accommodate the later times and run for just an hour at central office. So I thank you. And at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Tom Jeffrey, our athletic director. Good evening. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the athletic strategic plan. I'll keep it brief. Um, part of our strategic plan is comprised of our, our committee of our athletic council. They make decisions on policies we change and different things like th of that nature. And that's comprised of board members, Dr. Paul Johnson, Doug Schieffer, board member, Superintendent Kevin Kimmel, the secondary administration, and our athletic booster president. Uh, two years ago, the community member, several community members, school officials, and coaches came together to develop this plan. Uh, it took about a full year for us to complete this plan and took a lot of work. As you can see, our goals focus on several core concepts of competitiveness in our athletes, uh, facilities, a process for hiring and evaluating our coaches, which we did that process this year, a spirit, leadership, sportsmanship, and citizenship in our student athletes. Some things that have already come as a result of this plan is we have a student-led spirit committee, which was just the seniors last year. There was about four seniors that we selected, and this year we're working on getting that down nine through 12. Uh, a plan for facility improvement, a blueprint for hiring our coaches and evaluating them, there's a Redmond Coach of the Year. Jeff Fisher was our, our, our Redmond Coach of the Year this year, and there's a plaque outside honoring him on the, just below the Wall of Fame outside the Little Theater, so you can check that out. We reestablished field, field Day with the help of parents, the administration, and the physical education teachers here in this district. Our elementary programs have expanded, and we want to continue to expand those programs. We took several students, about 27, to the to leadership conferences, and we took four to an OHSA leadership conference. Though we have made several um, steps in, in this plan, we still need more help, and I'm looking for more people to help further develop these goals. So if you're interested, my contact information will be up at the end of this, um, end of this presentation, or you can just call me or contact me uh, throughout the school day. Now I'm gonna turn it over to our treasurer, Don Jacobs, to talk about finances. Good evening, I am Dawn Jacobs. I'm the treasurer for Bucyrus City Schools. Uh, before I get started, I would like to recognize my board member that's associated with the Finance Committee, and that's our board president, Mr. Tony Lipscomb. When um, Governor Kasich took office, oh, and before I get started, I wanna let you know I'm probably the one that's gonna talk the longest, so I just wanna forewarn you that <laughs> you're stuck with finance now to the end, probably. Um, when Governor Kasich took office, uh, the state was plugging an $8 billion hole in their budget. Uh, that seriously affected the funding um, associated for school districts. And so what happened was is that we got a new state budget. Um, we got a new state foundation formula, and that resulted in reduced revenues for the district. Now, the goal of the Finance Committee is to keep the school district out of deficit spending. As of this point, with the revenues dropping so drastically, we have not been able to do that as of yet. Um, we have cut corners in every place possible, and so we're moving towards a smaller deficit for this. That's what we're projecting for this fiscal year, so hopefully that trend will keep moving. The only two ways that we can balance the budget at this point is to either increase revenues or decrease expenditures and we've cut corners in just about every place that we can. This thing seems to be moving on its own, sorry. 
This screenshot is um, the figures for the close of fiscal year 2012. The state foundation made up about 61% of total funding. Combined with the local tax revenue, it's almost 98% of our incoming revenue. So we are very heavily reliant on both of those revenue streams. All other funding was less than 3%. This next screen is um, expenses by function. Since we are in the business of instruction, um, the largest pieces of this pie are exactly what we would see. Um, and it is uh, expenses for instructional teachers that have to do with the direct instruction of students and the support staff associated with instruction as well. Between those two areas alone, it's almost 74% of our, our overall expenses. And just as a note, less than 10% of our expenses go for administrative costs. The next section is uh, expenses broken down by object. <clears throat> and since again, we are in the business of instructing students, we fund the majority of our expenses are for people and for programs. Between the salaries, the salary associated fringes and the purchase services used to um, buy additional, for the most part, instructional services for students, that makes up 95% of our overall expenses, which is what we should anticipate seeing. All other expenses, supplies, equipment, and other miscellaneous expenses are less than 5%. This next slide is, um, the trend data from 2005 to the close of 2012 of our overall enrollment. These are our October counts for each one of these school years. And as you can see, we've had a drastic reduction in, um, in student enrollment over that period of time. This data from 2005 to 2012 actually reflects a loss of 250 students to our district. And with a state foundation formula that relies heavily upon enrollment numbers, um, we're, that's, an, that's a big chunk of money. It's, it's a reduction of 14% in seven years. Now for 2013, we're actually hoping, the initial numbers are actually showing a little bit of an increase, so we're hoping um, that that actually stays in place for our official count for October. And with the reduction, um, it's in response to the lower enrollment numbers, we have also had to continually cut our certified staff. Now this is only the staffing levels on the certified side, so that would be all um, teachers. Um, between 2011 and 2012, we lost 11 staff members. Uh, between 2012 and uh, the, the amount of teachers we have for 2013, we lost another 15 staff. Now, We've actually lost 36 staff members since 2007. The majority of those cuts have actually come from attrition. So whenever someone has um, either resigned or retired, we have not replaced those positions. This next section is um, a graph that illustrates the net operating money um, that we have seen between 2007 and the close for 2012. Now, when we talk about net operating funding, we actually have a gross amount that comes into the district for revenue, but there are specific deductions that are taken off of the top before we actually realize um, those receipts for the district. And the, the, the deductions are um, open enrollment numbers out. These are students that have chosen to attend um, school at a different um, traditional public school district. So their funding actually follows them to the next district. Uh, community school transfer. Those are students that have chosen to uh, attend a charter school and their funding will follow them as well. Special education costs. There are some other minor adjustments that have to do with special ed and um, juvenile facilities, those kinds of things, and then uh, the retirements that are associated with 
um, the personnel levels for the district. Now you'll notice that um, this is almost a, a bell chart. We've actually got the, the, the peak in the center. Those, those three years are when we actually had stimulus money that came directly from the federal government. So that, that has resulted in you know, basically overinflating. There was prop up money to keep educators working, to keep police working. Um, so that was our benefit for um, being an educational entity. Now I will say, <clears throat> before we switch that slide, well we switched already. Um, in 2012, the closing figures for open enrollment out and community school transfer figures, the district actually lost over $1.5 million. And we actually had a deficit of $1.3 million for last year. So we're being good stewards with our money, but we're, we're losing a lot of students and their funding is following them. This next slide is is a combination between actual figures and what we've projected for the next few years. You'll see that we're projecting expenditures to go up and revenues to continue to follow the same trend in going down. These two trends are not sustainable. So at some point, um, we're either going to have to increase our revenue or find a way to continue to decrease our expenses. But these trends are based on um, the percentages that we've seen over the last few years. Um, additional, costs, additional cuts in the district are going to be affecting instructional programs. And that's a concern for all of us. We can, I, I will say that um, we actually put out a spending freeze last fall to the district staff and the response was overwhelming. Every place that we could, I mean, there were no textbooks purchased, there were less supplies purchased, there were, we actually cut those expenses everywhere that we could, and it was with the support of the district that we actually realized those figures. But those figures in themselves are not sustainable either. There has to be a point where we're going to have to replenish those supplies, we're going to have to replenish those textbooks. Um, my last slide is um, the meeting dates for the Finance Committee. Um, these dates are scheduled um, just after the close of each quarter. Um, I actually provide the committee with um, the closing re results for each one of those quarters, and then we develop action steps associated with those results. Um, my contact information is at the end. And so if, um, if anybody would like to join the committee or if they have any um, specific questions or concerns or would like to have anything explained in more depth, feel free to contact me. Thanks, Dawn. I promise things will pick up here a little bit. Everybody's real quiet. As you can see, we've been working extremely hard to implement the goals outlined in both our district continuous improvement plan along with our athletic strategic plan. As we continue to strive to meet the goals on a local level, uh, please note that uh, uh, local school districts are facing many new mandates from both the state and federal level. Some of these new challenges schools are facing include uh, new common core standards that are designed to prepare our students for college and career readiness, uh, new online assessments, they're designed to uh, assess the students' deeper understanding of the content, both new teacher and principal evaluations that both include a student growth measure, along with the third grade guarantee, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so as we face these challenges, um, I'd like to show a short uh, video uh, to give you some understanding of what's uh, being, um, what this, the, the, the direction that education's taken in our community or in our state and in our federal government. 